The first thing I did for my Oblivion pistol build was to collect a bunch of reference images. I've got a couple of good side views that were fan made, so this isn't from the movie, but it's a really good side shot, and it looks like this guy did a pretty great job of modeling that. Then I've got some screenshots from the movie, including a front view. It's not a really good picture, but it's the only front view I got. And then this really great side view showing a lot of the detail. So I've got those open on a second monitor, and then I'm going to do all my 3D modeling in Fusion 360 on a different monitor. Over here in Fusion 360, I've started a new project for my Oblivion pistol, and uh, I'm in that project, so I'm good to go. I can close that. The first thing I want to do is to insert the reference images that I made. I've got an attached canvas. It's going to go on this side view right here, and then I can go pick my image. And I could resize it here, but instead I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, over here in my canvases, I can right click, go to Calibrate, and then go zoom in on my right view. And I have this ruler that I included in my, uh, my original reference so that I can say from here, from the 1-inch mark over to the 18-inch mark, those should be 17 inches apart. So I can type 1, 7, I N for inches and hit OK and now it's gigantic. But uh, now this reference image should be scaled properly. And this original reference image I scaled over a photo of my hand holding a realistic uh, prop gun that was sized accordingly. So I know this should be good to go, the correct size. Now I can start modeling. Now there are lots of different ways to model this. I'm going to show you one way, starting with a sketch on this side view here. And I'm just going to draw a couple of reference lines uh, to get the front profile of this. So I'm just going to grab the top, which is about like that. And then this bevel, which is kind of right there. And then the bottom sort of bevel here that and the bottom of the gun which is kind of hard to see on this reference image but that's why I have lots of other reference images it's about about down here let's say like that now this again is just a sketch for reference so I've stopped the sketch and now I'm going to draw something on the front view and I have those points to work from. I also want to figure out where the center of this barrel is because it's a good reference point so I'm going to do a line like that that's kind of on the top and a line like that that's kind of on the bottom and then I want the center line for this so I'm going to draw a line kind of in the center and then See, I'll dimension, push D for dimension. That's 13. So this is this is kind of the center of our uh, barrel, and I know that it is. If I measure all the way from here to here, it is 26 millimeters in diameter. So now when I draw my front view, I can use that. Now that I have those lines laid out, I'm going to start a new sketch on the front view, like so, and I can use these points as reference. So. Uh, this is the center of my circle, and I know it's supposed to go uh, be 26 inches in diameter, so or millimeters in diameter. There we go, uh, and that'll be our barrel, and that lets us know roughly how wide this whole thing needs to be, which is a great place to start uh, because I need to draw around it. So let's start with a line. I'm just gonna do from the top there and the bottom there, a couple lines, and. Uh, then the width will be determined by this line. And we'll trim everything later. I need to decide roughly how thin the outer wall should be. And it looks like it, it's a little thinner than from here to here, which would be three millimeters. Um, so let's make that wall two millimeters thick. So I could even just, well, I can use my trim button, trim that, trim that, trim that, and trim that. And then this is where my bevel started, this point here. So I can 
draw out my line up here, which is uh, should be 135 degrees, like that. Now I can sort of trim everything out like that, and that is that bevel. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. So this bevel started right there. I'm going to go 135, trim that, and that, and that. I'm also going to draw a midline, like so, and uh, select it and hit X to make it construction line, like that. Now I can hit S and type in mirror and mirror all of these parts around or across that line. Hit the mirror line and that's the other side of our profile. These corners need to be rounded over a little bit so I hit S and type in fill it. I'm gonna grab that and that and that and that. And I can bring them all in at the same time. I only want a little bit of a round over, let's call it, let's say maybe two millimeters. And then on the bottom, it's, it looks like it's a little bit more aggressive. And this is where my reference images are coming in handy. So again, fill it. And these look a little bit more aggressive, almost totally rounded. Uh, we're gonna call this 10 millimeters. That looks pretty good. And then, I'm going to do an offset on this, although I may not use it right away, but um, I'm going to hit O for offset and then click on both of these and hit, it wants to be construction, I don't want it to be a construction line. And I said that was about two millimeters in, so that's what we're going to do there. And this should be the good start for our profile on this gun. Stop sketch. And the first sketch I made I can hide, I don't really need that. And then I can go in here and grab my profiles like that and hit E for extrude. And I'm going to do it in uh, two sides. And now I'm going to go in my side view, grab one part that's going to go kind of back to here and another part that's going to go all the way up front like that. And we have a really great start to our blaster. Now I'll go and add some detail to the side of the gun. And this is just a matter of drawing all of the sort of outline shapes for our gun using more sketches. All right, now that I have a bunch of pieces drawn out for the side, I can go and extrude them. I can actually hide the body and hide the sketch or the canvas and then just grab all of these areas and then we can do some extruding. Some of these are gonna be cutouts, some of them will be details later. So I've only grabbed the ones that are gonna be cutouts. I grab my body, I can hit E for extrude and then go to symmetric and pull those through everything and hit enter and look at all that we've accomplished already. That's pretty cool. The next thing I wanna do is make the barrel and this sketch still has our circle and uh, I can just extrude that. And then I'll do two sides I'll have the front of it come out to where it ought to be, and then I will have the back of it come to where it ought to be. If I look at the side view, I can say this should be in a little bit, and this, looking at my reference image, is just behind the front of this edge there. I'm going to create a new body instead of a cut, and hit OK, and there is our barrel and it peeks out a little bit above the top there which looks good um, we just need to make a little bit of room for it here in the front and that's why we have this other profile here like that which I can hit extrude do the same thing two sides like that I'm actually gonna go further than I need there and then the back of it is gonna go to just inside this line right there. You'll see why in just a moment. Um, I'm gonna make a new body. I'm not gonna cut or anything. 
And then I'm going to uh, draw a new sketch. So let's draw a sketch on this side view here. And I'm going to go just a little bit behind this line here. So I'm going to go, let's say here, straight down to there. And then I'm going to match this edge here. Let's get it close. And then I'm going to go up here and close that. And now I'm going to hide my barrel, which would be this fella here, and the gun body. And I'll hide that and extrude this symmetric to cut out the back of that. And now I'll bring my gun body back and combine, modify combine, this with that and do a cut. And that cuts out that front part and you can see the barrel will stick out right there, which looks pretty good. Maybe a little wide, but it looks pretty good. This barrel piece here I'm going to use to cut out a channel for our barrel. Combine that with that and do a cut. So now I've got this hollow tube in there. And then on this face I'm going to create a cylinder. And in the center there and it's going to be just shy of the diameter of our barrel hole that we made. So let's do 20.8 like that. And then I can extend it all the way out to the length that I want. Make sure I make a new body. And that goes about there. On this face I'll create another cylinder right there. Again I'll center it and this will be about let's say 18 millimeters in diameter and then I'll drag that into our barrel and that creates the hole down the middle of the barrel. And I only need this to go down let's say 20 millimeters. And now this barrel will fit inside the sleeve there uh, but there's a little bit of a gap so it's got a little room. I'm going to print those pieces separately. There's some kind of sight on the barrel here and I'm going to draw that. I'm going to create an offset plane to draw my sketch yeah, right about there. Now I can draw a sketch on there. And I'm just kind of going to I'm going to hide the gun body and this is going to go on the barrel. So I'll just draw it uh, roughly where I think it ought to go. Now I can extrude this and even though it's not perfect I can get it started and then tweak that sketch a little bit. Like that, going to create a new body. And it is clearly much too tall so I can go in to my sketch and just tweak it a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Now all I have to do is cut some big old champers in the front of this thing. So that's our site. We just want to make a little room for it in the barrel. So I'm going to combine that with that I'm going to do a cut but I'm going to keep the tools and that means we've got a little indent on the top of the barrel and that's where that'll go once it's being assembled I am going to nudge these faces in a little bit to make some clearance I can do that by grabbing this face in here and doing a press pull I can shrink it down a little bit but I'm only going to move it uh, negative 0.1 millimeters. And let's see how it fits. That might be might be a little bit too much. Negative 0.05. There we go. A little bit of a gap. And that is the barrel assembly there. These parts, the barrel and the little sight for it, I think are pretty much done. So I can actually start printing these while I model the rest of the gun. So I'm going to go do that. Actually, before I print that, I want to add one more feature. I'm going to hide my barrel, and on this face here, I'm going to make 
a uh, circle. So let's do a sketch on there, do a circle in the center. Um, I'm going to make this 8 millimeters, which is a little bigger than the diameter of threaded rod that I have right here in my hand. I'm going to stop my sketch and extrude that in two directions. One of them will go through the barrel to punch a hole in it. And I don't want it to come all the way through the end like that. It'll we'll leave a little bit of material in there. And then we'll bring it the other way through the body of the gun. This will give us a cavity that we can put that threaded rod in when we're assembling this. It'll help it all stay together, but it'll also give it a little bit of weight. So let's bring that out as kind of as far as we want. And now enter, and it cuts a hole. So now my barrel and the body have a hole through it. We can put a threaded rod in there and one in there. Now I'll print the barrel. The next part will be the handle and I have a pretty good idea how I want to do this. I'm going to build it separately and I'm going to build it upright. So I'm going to rotate my canvas so that the handle is facing straight up and down or as straight up and down as possible. And then I'm going to create an offset plane from any of these planes. Just bring that down to kind of the top-ish part. And I'm going to draw on that. It'll be a rectangle. And I want it to be the width of my blaster move that over so it's kind of centered and then dimension one side nope do a dimension from here to here that should be let's try 45 millimeters and I'll move it back towards the center pretty close that looks alright Hide the bodies and draw a center line, make it construction, and then I'm going to start adding some fillets. So the back corners will get their own fillet. And the front corner was is going to get an arc. We'll do a three point arc. I think it's a little bit flat on the front, and then it comes way, way back kind of like that and I can just mirror that over that midline and then I can stop the sketch and extrude that and see how it looks turn on the body so I can actually see what's going on and I'm going to do two sides. This one will go way further than I need it. We'll trim that later. Now I need to decide if I think that looks good. I think I want to round these two edges over so I can go back into that sketch and do it. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Actually going to bring this further than I need it and then I'm going to trim a little bit of it off to match the uh, the bottom part there. So I'm going to do another sketch from there to there to there to there. And I can use that to cut that off. Like that. Now I just need to make the bottom part. I'm going to create an offset plane from there and then I can draw uh, my sketch on that. Once again on this I will draw a midline and make that construction and then I'm gonna draw a similar profile but just make it a little bit uh, nose heavy.
round that out a little bit. Now I have a couple of profiles to work from and I can do a loft. Well, I can try anyway. I'm going to create a loft from that to that. And it makes a cool looking thing there. Now that that's made, it's a, it's a little rough. We can tweak it a bit. We can bring the sketch back and edit it. Should be able to bump this out a touch. And this needs to go a little longer as well. And then when I stop the sketch, it'll update. That looks okay. That's not perfect. But I think we can work with that. I'm going to extrude this down a touch. Let's do like two millimeters. And everything kind of gets rounded out. So we can do a fillet on there. Round that out. Like so. That isn't flawless but I think it's good enough for what we need. The next thing I want to do is to make space for it so I'm going to create a rectangle right here. And we're gonna go from here to there and we'll extrude that uh, and trim that right off. We don't need that. Now the handle can be moved back into place but we'll rotate our canvas back to where it was before so that we know where the handle should go and then we can rotate our handle move and rotate our handle let's trim some of that handle so I can modify split body. We'll split that one and the tool we use is this plane right there. So now the top of our handle, this guy right here, we don't need that anymore. Gone. And the chunk in there we'll take care of in a moment but we need to add this little bit here coming off the back. So I'm gonna start a sketch on here. Just draw a little shape Actually, we'll make a rectangle like that, and then we'll fill at the corners. We're going to bring those in quite a bit more. And then the profile we just drew can get extruded down, and we'll bring our handle back. And that's going to be, for now, we'll just do a new body. So we can see how everything is going to come together. That looks okay to me. And now I can start combining. So I'm going to combine this with that and that. And we'll do a join. And we will not keep the tools. There we go. Now this cutout right here we can do with one of our older sketches. Right there. We'll bring that back grab these and extrude them. We'll do a symmetric extrude through everything. And we can actually see I did not go low enough down here. So I'm going to finish that but I'm going to edit this sketch and this line needs to come way down like that. And stop the sketch. And there we go. I can hide that and there's our handle. A little rudimentary, but it gets the job done. So using a lot of those similar techniques, like drawing profiles and extruding them, I'm going to add a bit more detail to our prop. I'll see you on the other side. Coming up on the finish line here, and there are a couple of things I want to add. There are these lines that divide up the model a little bit, just kind of details like this bit here. Show you how we can do that. I'll create a new sketch. 
and let's do a line and I'll just draw this line that'll do put a field on there like that stop the sketch and now I'm going to modify split body I'm going to select the whole body and then for the splitting tool I'm going to create that line and it makes a cut all the way through the whole model and we can see now that our model our gun body has been split into two parts let's hide everything else so there's this top part and this bottom part We'll combine them back up, but first, grab the chamfer tool, select my edges. Like that. And add like a, eh, one might be a bit aggressive. Let's do a 0.5 millimeter chamfer on that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. With this, that, that. Like that, 0.5, and then I'll bring the other part back, and I can merge these back together. So modify, combine that with that. We'll do a join, and we will not keep the tools. The models are put back together again, and now there's this really cool looking groove all the way around our part. I'll just repeat that for the rest of the panel lines on this model. Here's my finished model. You can see I've added this little switch and a spot for it, some of these little detail bits here, more panel lines, trigger, trigger guard. I've kept some of those parts separate so I can print them apart from the main gun body. I can also paint them separately. So now I should be able to take all of these fellas. I'm gonna dump them into Cura and print, I think most of these over on the Ultimaker and ABS.